Hello, Ken Weller here with New Tech Inventors. And today we're going to answer some questions that some people have had um, and have left comments on my YouTube channel wanting to know a little bit more about the business aspect and um, things about starting a business, how you start a business. Uh, I started a business, New Tech Inventors, um, using 3D printers to manufacture some products. Okay, now let's all get started here. Um, first of all, uh, it all starts out with an idea. And when I decided I was going to retire from the construction business, I had been involved in electronics most of my life. Um, so I had a lot of electronic parts and things that I'd been fiddling around with as a hobby on the side uh, for several years prior to my retiring from the construction business. And, and I kept looking for new technologies and stuff. Um, I got into the Arduino boards, which are similar to the Raspberry and other uh, microprocessor uh, chip-based uh, products that are available out there. And um, I started programming some of these little Arduino boards. And that was real neat because you can take just a little uh, matchbox type uh, device and have it control uh, several other devices, lights, motors, and so forth. And I do plan to incorporate some of those in my print farm for monitoring temperatures, monitoring printers, and so forth. Um, that's what OctoPrint does uh, using the Raspberry. So uh, originally, my idea was to come up with some kind of electronic inventions. So I worked on a lot of different ideas. And my idea process was uh, look at different things. I looked at uh, coming up with some type of electronic controlled animated uh, Halloween characters. Uh, a witch or a monster that would actually be animated, move, make noises, have lights, uh, laser eyes, and so forth. Um, I looked at um, a way to have a yard display at Christmas using a train and outlining that train and having wheels on the train with um, LED light streams that would actually rotate, making the wheels look like they're turning and coming up with animated things like that. I had a little snowman that I was trying to figure out or Santa Claus sled, things that I could decorate, a tree that would have lights that would be different colors and that would come on at uh, different intervals controlled from an Arduino board or something similar. So those were the kind of ideas I was uh, coming up with. And working with electronics, I had, um, had to take these Arduino boards and sometimes solder jumpers or make certain changes to them. And at my age, my eyesight's getting poor. I need a lot of light. So I needed light and I'd get a light down there and it would be in my way. And then I couldn't see and I'd have to put on some um, strong glasses. And then I'd have to hold the things to solder and it was just very cumbersome. And I know there are items out there, and I had a couple of them. They had a couple little clips that would hold something, a little magnifier. But it just wasn't quite enough. And so that gave me the idea, well, what if I came up with something that would have longer, flexible arms and um, have be able to hold all these different devices? And that's where I came up with the idea of the helping hand 
and you've seen the demonstration videos and stuff. So that was an idea that I had among all these others that I started pursuing, but I realized immediately that I needed to um, have a way to make this thing work. So what I did, I started, and I have a ton of these little spiral notebooks, and I would go through here and come up with different ideas. Like, okay, I could have a microphone on one of these microphone booms. I could put a laser, a crosshair laser on it. I could put a spotlight on it. I could put a clamp that would hold something. I could put something that would hold something down to the surface. And, um, you know, I just kept working through different ideas and sketches, of things that I could do with this flexible arm. And then I came up with the idea, okay, but what if I want to attach, be able to quick change these different things? So I started trying to come up with a device and at first, it was a device where two pins would go in and there'd be a locking device. This this was my first design. And then um, I thought, well, there's got to be something a little better than that. So then I said, well, what if I had something? This is still using the interlocking concept. Um, and... I kept continuing on, and then I came up with this design, and it was going to have two rectangular shaped uh, and kind of cone shaped slots in a block where the different attachments could slide down in that, and then they could have flexible arms going out to the light or the clamp uh, like you see here. So I toyed around with that idea a little bit and then I came up with one, well, I'll need power and everything. And so I put, added on to it to have a place to put some power plug-ins. And then at the same time, I changed and decided, well, I need something besides that rectangular shape. And that's when I came up with the round um, uh, slotted part. And in some of these early pictures, like right here, this is where I started coming up with the sizes and the spacing and dimensions for those parts and draw, making sketches of the different parts. Okay, at this point, now, what am I going to make these parts out of? How am I going to make them? Am I going to buy a block of plastic and start drilling holes in it and cutting slots out with a Dremel tool or something to make this? And um, I went through pages and pages of uh, and multiple spiral binders uh, coming up with what I have today, the end product. So there's a lot of work and everything and just coming up with the idea and doing drawings to kind of prove that concept. That's about the time I thought about 3D printers and wondering just how hard is it to make a part with a 3D printer and what would be involved because up until that point all of my drawings even if they were somewhat three, 3D drawings for these parts uh, they most of them were two-dimensional drawings and I would do some perspectives, but still getting to a 3D drawing. So what I did, I went online and looked for some 3D software. And at that time, 
I found, this was in uh, December 2019, I found the Autodesk 123D Design software. It was free, downloaded it, and then I started trying to learn how to use it to make those parts that I had sketched out. Once I was able to get one of the basic parts sketched out, and it was very crude and very simple, I purchased a 3D printer and got the printer, assembled it, was able to take the drawing that I had drawn in 3D, and I found out about Cura, so I downloaded the free Cura software. And once I created an STL file with Autodesk, I loaded that into the Cura software and sliced it. It told me how long it was going to take to print and everything. And I took that chip, put it on a little microchip, and plugged that little microchip into the 3D printer, put some filament in it, and crossed my fingers. And sure enough, it started printing. And I had a few adjustments to make, learning how to set up the printer and everything. But I was able to start making some parts. So that got me all excited. So I started doing 3D drawings of the other parts that would interchange with uh, the basic uh, power head of the helping hand. And I made 3D drawings of that sent them to uh, the slicer, Cura, got a G-code file, put it in the printer, printed those parts. And I'd start finding out, well, they don't fit together because the dimensions aren't exactly what I put into the CAD software by the time it's sliced and go, goes through the printer. And that's because... Uh, and, you may be able to buy a 3D printer that prints exactly what you tell it to, but when you're spending $130 or $140 like I did on a 3D printer, uh, you're not going to get one that's going to be 100% uh, uh, precise. So I had to make adjustments, and I would have to print the parts that went inside of those slots a little bit smaller than what I had uh, planned on the slots being. If I plan on a slot width of, of um, four millimeters, I might have to print the piece going in the slot at 3.7 or 3.8 millimeters to get it to fit in there. Um, and so I had to go through that process of trying things and making adjustments until I finally work that out. So that's part of the process after you do the 3D uh, drawing and printing the part, then you gotta test it, and then you gotta come back here and redo the drawings and make adjustments, do it again. And you'll do this process, you'll be in this loop for quite a while until you get a part that you think is as near perfect as you're gonna get it. Once I got that, then I had a helping hand. I thought, well, this might be a product that I can sell. But if I'm going to sell it, I need a business. So then I had to come up with a business. Okay, and coming up with a business, here's another book. Okay, I looked at all these different things I'd have to do. And I started trying to think of business names. And I had to come up with a name. And what I came up with was things like... Um, Weller Product Design, Weller Innovative Products, uh, Intuitive Design and Manufacturing, New Era Designs, New Era Products, New Age Products, New Technology Products, Advanced Products, Time Changing Products, Tech Products Group, United uh, Design Group, uh, United Product Design Company, and so forth. And... Uh, came up with um, New Tech Designs, New Tech Products, New Tech Products Group, um, and so forth. 
So I was coming up with all these different names. And as I was going through these names, I uh, started narrowing down a little bit more. I had to go look online. You go online and you look for domain names, .com domain names that aren't used and that aren't for sale. And I tried different things. I tried new tech devices, uh, new tech inventions. And new tech inventions sounded pretty good to me. But newtechinventions.com is not available. So I scratched that one. But I did find out that new tech inventors was available as a dot com. New tech inventor and new tech inventors was available. So I went and I checked to see if there was a business registered in uh, Tennessee called New Tech Inventors. I went and searched Google for New Tech Inventors. I went and looked every place for New Tech Inventors, didn't find it anywhere. So I immediately uh, secured the domain names New Tech Inventor and New Tech Inventors with GoDaddy. Okay. Now I've got my domain names. I also went out and set up uh, Facebook for New Tech Inventors, um, accounts with Google New Tech Inventors, um, just about everything uh, that to do with New Tech Inventors, securing that I would have, uh, you know, control over New Tech Inventors. So now I have my name. So I have the, the name of the business after doing all of these searches. But in the process, I've also set up a YouTube channel called New Tech Inventors. I've set up all of these other accounts. And I've set up a business. I've set up a bank account for New Tech Inventors. So I've got the business thing set up now so I can legally do business. Now I've got to get back to the product. Now, I need a patent for that product. And this video may be getting kind of long, so we may be actually going to a part two to uh, discuss this phase of it.